Hey everybody and welcome to the next episode of Bastock and Bachelor's Bullshit Busters. I'm Simon Bachelor. I'm Adam Bastock. And this week we are going to be talking about how to use Zapier to supercharge your email marketing list. So first of all, Adam, do you want to give us a short rundown of what Zapier is? Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting and, and quite unusual tool, but is massively handy for just connecting various pieces of software that you use. So it essentially sits as like a bridge between two bits of software. So for example, it might be between like uh, Shopify and Google Sheets, or it might be between MailChimp and um, like your CRM system like Pipedrive, or any kind of two pieces of software that you use, it can connect up. Um, there are limitations on it, but very minor from what I've seen. It connects most apps that most people use. And I've seen applications for it ranging from kind of accountancy, so automating certain like invoice requests or certain kind of exports of data through to marketing, through to just, you know, admin and, and daily tasks. So it's a really useful, simple, it's free, I think. It's got a paid five, version. Five zaps for free. Yeah, so it's limited, but it's still quite useful for, to kind of getting started with. Um, mm. And, you know, the paid one, I think, is still quite cheap. I think it's like $10 a month or something like that. And that lets you just connect various bits of software to each other um, to really just automate your your kind of life as much yeah. as as much or as little as you want, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's a good summary. I mean, I think uh, I know a few people who are using it to do some quite complicated things, but ultimately <laughs> the use cases I've always found myself going to have been for something really simple. So, for example, we use uh, Mighty Networks for Marketing Success Club. So when someone joins Mighty Networks, Mighty Networks is connected to Zapier. So what I do is I get the first name and the email address of the new member, and I put that into uh, MailChimp. But what I then do is I attach a tag of member to that user in MailChimp. With you, yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm taking data from Mighty Networks or Marketing Success Club, and I'm adding that data to MailChimp. So what this means is when I'm doing my sales and marketing emails, when I'm sending out promotional offers to try and get people to join, I can exclude people who are members. So I don't have to go into Mighty Networks, download the members list, load it into MailChimp, compare, and then take out those people and say, all right, these people are now the members, so don't email them. It all just sits there and works in the background. So I don't need to... Um, I don't need to worry about the fact that the members list might not be up to date in MailChimp because it's synced. Um, I think that's a really good example of kind of how this, where this product, where Zapier sits in the market almost, in the fact that for that integration or that kind of functionality, normally you'd have to have a, a direct kind of integration with MailChimp and Mighty Networks, where with Zapier, both of those systems don't need to talk to each other mm. at the kind of like, at their business kind of level. They don't need to develop that specifically, but Zapier can come in and then connect those two up and really make life a lot easier for you. Um, and as I say, it kind of, it, it does it to so many different systems that you don't need to have that native functionality within, the, within that um, software. Yeah. I mean, the other thing that you can do, thinking about it, one of the things we've set up for a client, they're using a CRM system, and that CRM system doesn't have a WordPress plugin. So we built them a website on WordPress, and we use yes. Gravity Forms to make the contact form. So what this chap wanted is when someone fills in his contact form, he wanted a deal to be created in his uh, CRM system with the name, the website, the message, so he can then just within HubSpot he was using to then come up and, and say, oh, right, I've got a new deal here, and he can then call them back. But, but as I say, because that CRM doesn't directly tie in with WordPress, it wasn't possible to send that data easily. But because Gravity Forms is on Zapier um, and HubSpot was on Zapier, we could just plug it together using um, a, a Zap connection. So I think a good example of how I use that when I I don't use it anymore, but I used to use Pipedrive for my CRM kind of mm. about six months ago, and I was kind of playing around with it, and I was running my uh, free kind of pub events for SEO stuff. I used to be able to push stuff from Eventbrite into Pipedrive, mm. and then kind of tag them as as event goers, so that if I ever got an email from them from anywhere in the future, I know that that was like a source almost. Um, and that, you know, in terms of my lead gen, those free pub events were actually generating some sort of inquiry, whether that was a month later or six months later, it would still kind of tag it. 
and I think I had it integrated with MailChimp in some way as well. So it's yeah. the idea of being able to connect those three sources or four sources and have them all talking to each other in a way that you would not normally be able to kind of do so. Um, I mean, are there any kind of top tips that you'd give for it or any kind of common um, use cases that you really think people should use more or is it kind of so specific to individual businesses that it has to, it depends on what people are trying to achieve? I would say if you're using a service that collects user data, i.e. not like tracking, but like people actually declare their information. So people putting in an email address or people putting in their name and email mm. and password, that kind of thing, like sign ups basically, then you should be capturing that information and putting it into your mailing list. So you might not have a use case for it directly at the moment, but in the future you might want to be able to do that. So for example, another one I've just thought of is on our website, when you download the free guide that you uh, can get on the site, you put in your email address to do that and it actually adds you to MailChimp. So what I do is I then add, when I add that email address, I add a tag of which guide they've downloaded. Right, yes. And that then triggers off a workflow. And then, as I say, that workflow is then filtered by by member status. So, yeah. again, if they become a member, they don't get the next five nurture emails because that would be really annoying. So my top tip, I guess, is to try and capture uh, information early on and then append information during your process so if they become a customer so let's say you drag your deal from com when you mark a deal as one in pipe drive that's an action you can trigger in zapier i would yeah. then get that signal to go back to mailchimp and add the tag of customer perfect i think that's a really good example so yeah. you're then you can then filter out so you you might have an offer for people who aren't yet customers you don't want to send that to customers because it is just not relevant but then yeah. also you may want to send a different offer to existing customers so yeah. just by adding that one tag using zapier it's automated you don't have to think about it but when you need the data it's there so you, there's a lot of ways you can get data in um to zapier uh sorry into mailchimp but for example mm. i mean you can also this also ties in with active campaign with clavio there's loads of different things and um, you can tie it in with your accounts package, as you said. So maybe mm. if you add a new person to zero, it then goes to MailChimp and takes them as customer. Yeah. And I think that's a, the, 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 kind of the thing I want to emphasize here is how simple it is to set these up. Because it sounds oh, like yeah. it's quite technical and quite yeah. and quite complex, but really it is literally you'll go onto Zapier. Um, I'm not trying to sell it too much here, but just kind of pick the, the pick zero and then pick MailChimp as like the connection. Yeah the two connections and then it will give you like a list of pre-formatted suggestions of what to do or you can create custom ones and then it's literally a case of just drop down menus and selecting which fields and which stuff you want to do mm. so if you're worried about it being too technical or too um just complex for you to try and understand and kind of get going with it they've made it really streamlined mm. and really simple just to be able to go in and go right i've got this name for, i've got first name and i want it to be put into a field called first name in mailchimp how do yeah. i do that and it will just it just kind of matches those up for you so I think that's kind of key to emphasize really in, in just experimenting with it and i think a lot of kind of small business owners that i speak to over the past year or so have always come to me with bigger ignoring the seo stuff and kind of bigger um, problems with their business and going how do i do this and the answer is well you can either hire someone to do it for you and it's quite mm -hmm. expensive like a virtual assistant or if it's a fairly routine kind of basic task you can do it with zapier um, and then they've kind of gone away and just had a play with it at, and manage to automate some of their workflow and some of their, yeah. their, the, the daily stuff they don't like doing with that. So if there's any kind of basic tasks like that you've got in your life that you want to get rid of, yeah. then I think have a look at it because there's a high chance that it will be able to to, to fix it. Mm. Um, yeah, and I think it's just it's just worth having a play around with, really. Yeah, I mean, you, you can all, it doesn't all have to end up in MailChimp. You can do other stuff like it can go into Google Sheets and add a new yeah. row to Google Sheets, for example. So if you're still running stuff off, off, off a spreadsheet, if you've got a contact list or a lead gen thing on, on, on a spreadsheet with your you know people to call this week or whatever, then you can get it to add that row to there um, for you. So there's loads of different things it, it, it um, connects to. I've just got the, the list here. I know it's a bit annoying me looking off screen, but just to give you a very quick example of where it kind of connects with... Um, it's got yeah, type form, Google Forms, ClickFunnels, Calendly, Stripe, mm. um, Shopify, Instagram, loads of different stuff you can do with it. 
yeah, yeah. There's some really, really powerful stuff. So I'd highly recommend you give it a go. Um, like, check it out. We'll put a link in the um, description uh, to mm. get you straight into Zapier and you can start having a play with it. Um, if you get stuck or you get any want to ask any questions about what you could do with it, then do get in touch with us. Um, I can be reached on LinkedIn. I'm Simon Batchelor on LinkedIn. I'll put a link in the description again. Uh, Adam, how can people get in touch with you? Best way is probably LinkedIn as well with me. I'm always kind of quite active on there under Adam Bastock. Um, or my website is abastock.co.uk. Excellent. Okay. Well, I think that's it from us and Zapier over here. So yes. we will see you next time. Take care. Thanks Bye. very much. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.